वेलकम टू प्यार 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 द स्पोरल सीरीज एक्सप्लोरिंग द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ फिल्मी रोमांस The love triangle has been an on-screen staple in Hindi cinema. We've seen all possible manifestations of the theme. Ladka A and ladka B want ladki C, but ladki C ke papa nahi manenge. Ladki X and ladka Y are in love, but ladka Y doesn't want to hurt ladki Z who has always been in love with him. And sometimes it seems like ladki P is the one in the way of ladka Q and R ka um romance. Tu ab kis to nahi karega na? You would think that in all these years of Hindi cinema, filmmakers must have tried every possible permutation and combination of the triangular love story. Yet this is where Hindi cinema disproves the very laws of mathematics to bring out newer themes to explore. But when did the love triangle story start? Bollywood saw a couple of love triangles here and there around the 30s and early 40s. But in 1949. Mehboob Khan released the romantic drama Andaaz featuring Nargis, Dilip Kumar and Raj Kapoor. It was the highest grossing Indian film when it released and with good reason. Andaaz gave Hindi cinema a defining blueprint of the trope it was to have its longest affair with, the love triangle. Dilip and Neena are friends, but by the laws of ladka aur ladki kabhi dost nahi ban sakte. Dilip falls for Neena. Meanwhile, Nina and Rajan love each other but he misinterprets her relationship with Dilip as an affair and in true male fashion acts like a complete jerk about it. Nargis is beautifully portrayed throughout the movie as a modern progressive Indian woman. This is directly antithetical to the heroine trope of the demure sanskari Indian woman. She takes charge of her life, befriends men and is generally independent. The problem is all of that is completely negated in the end when she admits to having made a mistake by adopting the values of the Indian elite who normalized this western outlook. Kusoor mera tha. Aur us society ka jisko maine apna liya tha. A poster of the film says The ways of the West are good for the folks of the West. For us, our own ways are best. The year was 1949, and the norm for Indian women was Bharat Mata, on whose identity the nation was being built. So Nargis becomes the bad woman in the guise of a heroine, who ends up as the sacrificial goat for the cause of Bharatiya Sanskar. All while the two men stumble about in ignorance and jealousy. even going so far as to completely objectify her in a scene with a not so subtle flowery metaphor ye phool sirf aap par hi khilta hai rajan babu ji aap to takalluf karte hain sahab usse zyada ye aap par sachta hai overall in the 50s while films might have depicted characters emotions with nuance Love triangles would inevitably end up upholding traditional ideas of good and bad. But any talk of love triangles would remain incomplete without Yash Chopra's 1981 timeless and uncomfortably authentic Silsila. In a tweet, Amitabh Bachchan pointed out that at the time of its release, Silsila was deemed silly sila and had failed to make a dent at the box office. Today, however, it stands out as a cult hit. Writer Gautam Chintamani points out that the audience often dislike films that imitate actors' real life too closely, chalking it up to people perceiving it as inauthentic. In the film, Amitabh's character is a victim of his circumstances. Yash Chopra uses this to justify his extramarital affair with Chandni, played by Rekha. And not only is it justified, it is romanticized. Rekha looks ethereal. Amitabh has never been as disarmingly charming. and that is possibly what proves to be its flaw pamela chopra rightly points out that people view marriage as a sacred institution in our country especially so in 1981 and silsila challenges that by depicting everyone as nuanced human beings no one is a villain and all their decisions have reasonable justifications chandni is the muse and the other woman while shobha is the good wife but both are portrayed with a sensitivity that evokes empathy The scene where Chandni and Shobha meet each other isn't catty or rude. It's a sincere confrontation of their world views. The end of the film restores all as the two errant lovers return to their respective spouses and this plays out on screen.
In the 90s, while the social locations and the clothes updated with the changing times, the themes remained the same. Rahul entered the narrative and everyone loves Rahul. Everyone loves Rahul. Rahul however only loves the girl jo andar se sanskari bhartiya nari hai. Dekho ladki to wo hoti hai jise ghar mein apni maa ke paas le jaya ja sake. You know. With movies like Pardesh, the women also ultimately opt for the sanskari Indian men whose values are no match for their western educated rivals. All in all, Sanskar really became the lead character in films around this time. Another enduring quality of Hindi cinema love triangles is the act of pitting women against one another to gain a man's approval. Magar aaj love is complicated. Movies like Shuddh Desi Romance and Ishkia have turned the love triangle on its head. Unconventional stories have replaced traditional themes. In Shuddh Desi Romance, we meet three people: two who have their anxieties with long-term commitment and one who doesn't. It gives us a realistic glimpse at people's problems with modern day romance. The director says in the garb of a romantic comedy our attempt is to touch upon real issues that youngsters in India are facing. Here both of them have ample agency to make their own choices. Meanwhile in Ishkia Krishna's character breathes new life into the love triangle by weaponizing her sexuality to get her own way and you end up rooting for her. In 2022 Shakun Batra's Gehraiya made a lot of waves for the love triangle between Deepika Padukone's Alisha, Siddharth Chaturvedi's Zain, and Ananya Pandey's Tia. But the film doesn't just pertain to love or lust. There are many more layers to unpack. For starters, Alisha is envious of Tia. The easy luxury of her life standing in stark contrast to Alisha's struggles to succeed. Alisha's affair with Tia's fiance may have a deeper root in Alisha and Tia's sibling rivalry. Zain and Alisha gravitate towards each other as people who don't fit in seamlessly in the posh life that they want to inhabit. And Tia too keeps secrets of her own from Alisha. In the end, Gehraiya doesn't punish Alisha for the infidelity. She prioritizes herself, tries to come to terms with her own problems, and finally does come into her own. While the movie might have other problems, it does give us a nuanced portrayal of the other woman, making her the central character. We understand where she's operating from, the sources of her motivations and subsequent actions. It's how things often play out in real life. Troubled parent-child relationships, unsaid hurt, holding yourself back, expecting much more than what you're getting from your partner, unexpected attraction, these are all very real. To see it on screen validates the very complicated lives we all lead. Despite years of watching this play out on screen, the love triangle stands strong and only seems to be increasing further. Forget movies. Today most OTT shows explore infidelity and the complexity of relationships using the love triangle. Even in TV serials like Bade Achhe Lagte Hain to Anupama and Ye Rishta Kya Kehlata Hai, kitchen politics have taken a back seat to some form of the love triangle. Are we in need of a new trope to explore for the subsequent years or is this trope just too relatable for Hindi cinema to actually do away with it Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to like share and subscribe to this world for more such videos